Wow. There you go. His rise in the sports business world. There's a science center, still the science center? Still the science center. Nearly as quick as the Space Needle Elevator. My mom and dad's old house. There's the old Coliseum. And where he can stand now, looking down on memory lane. It was in my kitchen in Magnolia. We had no idea we were gonna be able to see the Space Needle. And all of a sudden, one day we looked out and we could start to see the Space Needle going up. Rick Welts is a native Seattleite. First time I went to King TV, my dad took me down to watch the live taping, or I guess live airing, of the Stan Borson show. <laughs> are you ready, no more? Oh, are you ready? Well, for are you here today, too? Oh, for good to see you. Here we go. I kind of fell in love with television at that point. Uh, and I went to Queen Anne High School. We had some pretty spectacular views from Mr. Castle's science class. He used to walk down Queen Anne Hill to get to his high school job, ball boy for the Seattle Supersonics. Uh, what age was it when you became the ball boy? 16, because I did have the keys to the and then Seattle Center Coliseum. So once in a while, my buddies and I could go down and shoot some hoops on an off day when the court was down. The UW grad rose to become the team's communications director at the ripe age of 26. Rick and I go way back. And was with coach Lenny Wilkins when the team won it all in 1979. And the Supersonics win their first ever NBA championship. It was such a, a special moment, not only for the team, but I think for the whole city. But it is the uh, Sonics championship ring that uh, gets pulled out on special occasions. It all caught the eye of a young New York lawyer, you know, that guy. Have you read through those emails, especially you know, those between Mr. Bennett and the other? Owners? Live or not, I don't like to be interrupted. You know, David Stern is not beloved here in Seattle, but I know that he was a good friend to you. So he plucked this 28-year-old kid out of uh, Seattle, and, you know, I guess my good fortune was that he became commissioner a few years later. Together, the tandem led the NBA. Welts rose to vice president, credited with creating All-Star Weekend and marketing the league to new heights. He's a friend, a mentor. Um, you know, he's got a couple of blemishes on the resume. One would be the Sonics leaving Seattle. Years later, he would blaze a new trail, becoming the highest ranking executive in men's professional sports to acknowledge he is gay. And that was before leading the NBA's Golden State Warriors to three titles as team president. The team he brought home last week. Any excuse that everybody in the NBA uh, misses Seattle and uh, nobody more than me. Call it his personal effort to repair the divide between the league and the city, something a Hall of Famer like him could do. Welts was inducted last month, honored by his peers for his fantastic journey. When you were here running down the hill to Key Arena <laughs> so many years ago, did you, did you think that was a possibility? Did it even cross your mind? It, it would be so far-fetched to say that would even be a dream. His vision now includes a return for the Sonics someday in the city that gave him his start. I think it's inevitable we have a team back in Seattle. It's everybody in the league uh, misses Seattle terribly, knows what a great market this would be again for NBA basketball. At the Space Needle. The Sonics will always be a huge part of my life. Chris Daniels, King 5 News.